Good afternoon. Welcome to the latest in our series of live career webinars brought to you by the HOP platform. That is HOP Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal on your screen at the moment. You will see details of our website and some of our social media handles. We hope this is a website that lots of students and schools in Hertfordshire are aware of and are using because it is your one-stop shop to find out lots of information, lots of guidance about future guidance, uh, specifically within, within Hertfordshire. So the purpose of this webinar that we're doing today is to keep you really informed and inspired about a particular career, which today is gonna to be around careers in photography. And you are gonna hear from three fantastic panelists in a moment who have got an abundance of experience and knowledge and insight that they can share with you. And what we hope that you'll get out today is, you know a little bit more about maybe what your next steps might be, if this is a career that you wanna go into, and maybe what an actual career as a photographer looks like so what's the reality of it and what are all those steps that you might need to take in between to get there so just a bit of housekeeping for the webinar hopefully you can see and hear us and um, so that we can't see or hear any of you that are watching this at the moment if you're watching this live so it's just one half past four on thursday afternoon well done for coming home from school logging on and joining this webinar it's a great opportunity for you not only to hear from our panelists but also to ask them any questions that you've got as well. So if you've got any, no matter how technical they are, um, if you've got any questions you want to ask them, they are the experts. So you can do that on the questions tab on your dashboard. If you open that out, it opens out a little text box. You type your question in there, it'll only be visible to me, and then I will direct that question to um, whichever of the panelists most appropriate for. If you've got someone specific that you want it to go to, then you can. We are recording this webinar, so if for whatever reason you can't stay until the end of it, it will be available to watch back on our HOP platform. So we've got a YouTube channel on there. There are, I think, 67 of these webinars that go back about two and a half years now that are all available to watch. So um, I'm doubting there'll be something else in there that you'll be interested in. There may be something that your friends are interested in as well, but they will be on there tomorrow. But without any further ado, I am going to hand over to our panelists just to introduce themselves to you. Um, so I'm going to go in the order that you're sitting actually. So I'm going to start with um, Sam. So Sam, good afternoon. Tell us a little bit about you. Hi, um, I'm Sam and I'm a photography teacher on both the Level 3 and the HE photography programmes at Hartford Regional College. Okay, thanks Sam. And then Joel. Uh, so yeah, I also teach on the HE and Level 3 course at Hartford Regional College. Um, and also still professional working photographer, mostly working in kind of like advertising and also like film and TV. Okay, brilliant. And then good afternoon, Keith. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Keith. Uh, I'm an ex-student. Um, came here as a mature student, uh, did rather well. Went on to university, uh, did rather well. Um, took a year out and now I'm, I'm working here as learning support. Okay, um, thank you. So those are our three panelists, and as they said, I mean they're all here representing Hartford Regional College, which, for, so those of you that know, is um, the, you know the campus that you're on is actually the Ware one, isn't it? H HRC has two sites in Ware and in Broxbourne. But if you're watching from around the county, and I know from the registrations we did have people that coming from schools in Hitchin, and I think I saw one in Watford. Everything that you're hearing today is probably relatable to your local college, so whether that's West Hearts. North Hearts or Oaklands College. So anything you're hearing today might be specific to HRC, but very good chance that your local college offers the same course and will be able to give you the same experiences as well. Um, so, well, Sam, let me come back to you. Tell us a little bit about your career in photography before you went into teaching, because you, you've obviously covered lots of different aspects and genres of photography. Yeah, so I worked as an in-house photographer, which is quite rare but I was lucky enough to get a, a position in-house for uh, some time for um, a media company called Viacom. And I covered lots of their shoots for marketing, events, some press work, photographing some celebrities to go. And most of the pictures went on the side of a bus or on the London Underground. It's mostly for transport. So it's quite varied and I photographed a lot of their conferences as well around Europe, um, which quite a lot of big press shoots. Um, and then I moved into teaching, teaching photography as well. Okay, well, look, so let me go kind of right back to the start then. I mean, obviously photography is something that you've done for a long time in your working life. When did you first realise that photography might be a career? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it was probably a hobby for you when you were a little bit younger, you enjoyed doing it, but when was that? Well, I actually did it, 
I did it as an A level actually um, at college and really really liked it and then went on to do fine art photography course at university. Um, had it been a hobby? Yes, I suppose it had, but I could see that there were plenty of avenues to make a career out of that. I mean, you've only got to look around and see how we're, there's images everywhere and somebody has to take those and there's lots of endless opportunities of different ways in which you can enter the world of photography. Um, yeah. So I, I think you're lucky if you can combine a career and a hobby and I think lots of photographers do. Sure. Um, I'm thinking back to when you, you were at school and college, were you always very creative? Could you think you could turn your hand to other creative fields? Um, creative, yes, but I didn't, I didn't do an art GCSE. I don't think that matters so much with photography. I think that you need to be just taking pictures, even if you're taking them on your phone to start with and you're kind of looking at those and appreciating and looking at things visually, you can explore your creativity that way. Um, and then yes, I went on to join said to do an, an A level in um, photography and with media studies as well. Sure. And then, well, Joel, I know that photography hasn't always been, you, you know, your only career. I think you've done some sort of quite varied things beforehand. How was that journey for you with photography being something you obviously were really passionate about, and it eventually becoming your, you know, career as well? So yeah, I mean, I, I studied photography at university as well, and then on leaving university, I worked freelance for probably around ten years. Um, and when you freelance, you're pretty spread out. So I wasn't in house like Sam. Um, so I was working on lots of lots of different jobs, meeting lots of different people, networking as much as possible. Um, and then I kind of finally got my break more in like film and TV. So I started doing some bits for like Channel Four and BBC. Uh, which kind of helped get my foot in the door a little bit there um, and then I actually kind of just fell into teaching there was just an opportunity that opened up um, I did it and I really enjoyed it um, and it's something that I've carried on with now but I still do um, shoot my own work um, client work and stuff like that on the side as well but juggling the two can be difficult for sure and then Keith same question for you I mean you were telling me you, you're a carpet fitter weren't you that was your only yeah, time you put yeah. your arms up. Um, when I was younger, I worked in warehouses and supermarkets, and it was, I didn't find it very fulfilling. Um, I went on to be a carpet fitter, and I was really good for, you know, 10 years or so, um, <laughs> but I injured my knees. Um, so, um, yeah, sitting in a hospital bed, wondering what I could do next, um, I thought, let's do photography. Um, <laughs> then I came here. And then you, and then you're here, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look. Let's focus a little bit more on on photography. So, I mean, what my question for you is, I mean, you you've covered various different genres of photography. So, Joel, at what point does a photographer have to sort of specialise in the area of photography they want to go into? I mean, I would perhaps just preface that answer by giving some examples of some of the different areas of photography that people might go into. Uh, so there's there's loads of different areas that you might go into with photography. It could be to a nature photographer, it could be a fashion photographer. Uh, you could be more interested in kind of like black and white photography. Uh, it could be fine art photography. It, there's so many different types of photography that there are. Um, especially within our course, we give you a good range of different types of photography. So we work on different briefs. Um, so that students get a good range of different types of photography and kind of discover which ones they prefer and may want to specialise in. Um, and then going on into the second year of our course, students kind of usually tend to specialise a bit more then and then going off to uni as well, then they'll really start to specialise, narrow things down and see what kind of career path they really want to progress in that way. Um, so it does take a bit of time some students know earlier than others that's all dependent on the student some it just takes a bit more time to go out explore shoot more and 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 meeting people as well i think that's a big part of it net worth networking meeting new photographers that can inspire you and something can click and make you think oh, this is the avenue i want to go down it could be a bit of work experience that you've done um or you could be really lucky and just know from an early age, this is what I love to do. I love fashion photography and that's what I want to progress with. Um, but yeah, it, it's different. But what we try to do on the course is give a range of different briefs so that they can discover what specialism they, they want to kind of progress with. Sure. Okay. I, Sam, I'm, I'm quite drawn to your experiences working in-house for, you know, for, for, for fashion 
magazine. Can you tell us what did the average sort of day or week look like for you when you know you had a photo shoot? I mean, how long, how much of the day you're actually spending with the subject that you're that you're going to be taking images of, and how much is in the preparation for it and sort of the post production? Um, so if it was a, a portrait shoot, so for press, um, you would get possibly, if you were lucky, about 15 minutes with each person that you went in to photograph, um, or they would come into the studio, you have 15 minutes with them, time was precious for them. So you'd have to do a lot of prep beforehand, you'd have to know who they were, how they wanted to be represented, how you wanted to represent them, and you'd have to set up your studio or your working space before they arrived. Um, I also did lots of street photography, so I'd spend a long time walking and walking and walking around London, photographing um, people who, kind of people on the street and interacting with adverts on the street, looking at them or standing by them. Um, I'm now trying to think. And events, you'd be there. So some events, I would start at, I don't know, eight o'clock in the evening and it would finish at about two or something like that and then you'd have to spend lots of time the next day editing the pictures so it's mm. quite it is it is full on it's quite exhausting but each each job has its own sort of parameters and you'd have to prepare accordingly to what the client wants as well sure so, lots, lots of variation but that's what makes it more exciting in a way if you're the sort of person that likes variation and likes to be kept on their toes i think it's a good career to move into yeah, and I'm, I'm quite keen to explore the differences between working in-house, as you did then, as to being freelance, which I'm, and I'm guessing, Joel, majority of photographers probably are freelance. I mean, is that fair or...? Uh, yes, yeah, that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah just I was explain... looking at some time ago. I'm not sure as many in-house um, positions uh, there are anymore, um, but it, there was two of us, actually. There was two of us, and it was a big media company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is different. So freelance means you've got to go and find the work and you're as good as your last job and you have to network really well to get to know people and just make sure that people know and companies or potential clients know your work as well. So you need good social media activity, a good website. I think. Sure. Well, I mean, Keith, let me bring that question to you, take that question to you. How how often do you how frequently are you speculating for work at the moment and you know what are your particular areas of interest that you um so i concentrate mainly on sort of gallery work uh so it's it's trying to you know make yourself known to, to galleries and um having good projects as well to show them um when i travel quite a lot as well i've always got a camera on me um and it, yeah it's just getting known just getting your name out there again like social media is you know really important um you know just being nice as well you know um i think net networking is key yeah networking is absolutely key and as a freelance photographer you want to build that client list and if you have a solid client list um you'll find that the circles that you go around that we're within photography and creative industries are actually quite small and you will get recommended then um so once you've proven yourself and get your foot in the door um you'll start to see things moving more um but it's initially trying to get that foot in the door which is which is the biggest step um but again that doesn't come overnight obviously that comes with time with multiple shoots with proving yourself um so obviously there's hard work and there's dedication in there but that would be the same with, with any job I would say you need um, fairly good people skills. Even if you're photographing landscapes, you need to be able to, for people to see those landscapes. So you need to be able to talk to people and enjoy being around people, I think as well, sort of that aspect of it, that social aspect of photography is quite a key key thing to sort of how successful you are actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, I suppose that lends quite nicely into the next question, which which is the, what are the most enjoyable aspects of the role? And then uh, equally, what are the challenging sides of it that perhaps people don't realise? Uh, so the most enjoyable aspects is is, is the shoot, actually shooting. Um, that's the part I find most enjoyable. Um, the difficult aspects can be sometimes clients, uh, sometimes, sometimes the models that you're working with. Um, and for me is quite a lot of time the editing because that is a lot of time spent in front of the computer um, and can yeah it's just you're just sat in front of a computer for quite a long time doing the edit so i find the shoot more fun but then at the end of the edit you also get your final product which is 
which is um you know it's a, a nice thing to have it's you feel like you've achieved something then you know you get yeah, a good because yeah. when you get a really nice print yeah it's like oh, yeah, yeah happy with that and you're like the clients i love this yeah and then and it, so it's that point where it's good but it's it's that part in the middle well for me i find the editing the most difficult part and i like shooting the most yeah, yeah. But some people love editing, yeah. some people love I sitting in front of I quite like the editing as well, actually, and um, kind of seeing that image come to life. Mm -hmm. um, challenging, I think you've, you do have to keep on top of all the technical aspects of um, photography. You need to be able to use your camera well, you need to be able to understand light, and how to work quickly, especially if you're working with the model, um, and how to manipulate light well using your equipment. That's a challenge. And then finally, if you're freelance, it's it's finding that next job. That's a challenge too. Yeah. Uh, um, for you, Keith, what do you find particularly rewarding? I mean, if you, I see, I guess if you're doing uh, gallery work, it's having that yeah, thing, that tangible thing that you can actually see sorry. as yours. The art part's fine in a gallery, especially at the moment when like we've just come out of COVID. So you've got all these artists who haven't been able to display their work for you know a little while during that time they've been making work so they've got additional projects they want to get out there as well and it's you know you're looking at like a two-year waiting list for, for gallery space at the moment so um a little bit you've got to be a bit inventive with it as well um so it, don't just think of galleries think of maybe the right pubs or wine bars or coffee shops uh local halls anything like that that's so the, the challenging side is getting some wall space because mm -hmm. it is, you know, there's a lot of us out there, especially at the moment. Yeah, well, I suppose that's one of the challenges of being freelance, isn't it? Is making sure that you can promote yourself and the people see the value in in, in what you, in particular, can offer. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just well, come one, on then one, to. Sorry, well, go on, John. Sorry. One of the best things, though, about being freelance is that you are your own boss, you are your own company, and you get to work for yourself. So that when you said what is one of the best things about it, that that is a huge aspect for it. Whereas when you work in house. You're working yeah. for a client, you're working at a set rate, whereas if you're uh, freelance, you know, you set your rate, you set your hours and you manage your, your own workload. So that's, you know, you, you're, you're your own boss. Yeah. OK. Um, if anyone has any questions on anything that's being discussed at the moment, again, please do drop them in. Any thoughts or observations that you've got, drop them in and we, we will share those as well. This is your opportunity if you're watching this live at the moment. Uh, um, about some of your ideas off our off our panelists at the moment. So, I want to come on now to you know how someone gets on a photography course, you know, such as the ones that you offer at, at HRC. Um, do you just want to tell us the range of courses that are available for someone? If I, if I say someone who's just finished year eleven as a, as a starting point, but I know there are obviously other points that people can access courses. So, what sort of courses can they access? What levels are they, Joel? What will they be learning on them? Um, so after finishing GCSEs, what we offer here is a level three course um, and we offer level three courses in all areas of art and design. So that includes fashion, photography, graphic design, 3D, animation and fine art also. Um, so lots of different areas within art that you can um, still study here. Um, and a lot of them are, they are, do overlap and are interchangeable. So if you study graphics, Again, we collaborate with graphics because a lot of graphics companies use photography. We collaborate with fashion a lot because again, fashion photography and things like that. Uh, we have visual merchandising course here as well, which again crosses over because obviously they need for photographs to merchant, you know, to advertise their merchandise and things like that. So um, a lot of this, I think the most important thing is that we teach you how to be a creative. Um, and then that gives you lots of more options job wise for where you may want to go. Um, so if you think I want to be a photographer um, and you're not sure about the different areas in that, but I still really like graphics, you could study graphics, still do a bit of photography on the side as well. I think if you're taking the A level path, then um, you can obviously do the A level in photography, but it would sit nicely with um, A level in art as well or with graphics, that kind of thing. So an mm -hmm. art-based subject, media studies, media, digital you? arts, there's, there's there's definitely ways in both through the vocational and the, the A-level programs. Sure. We also have a level two. Yeah, go on. Yeah. 
that, yeah, so I was going to say, Keith was a really good example of a mature student coming back into education. But what I'm thinking, what about students who maybe have done A-levels, but did, perhaps didn't do art or photography, and they're thinking, well, maybe I want to do this as my next step instead of going to university. Is, is that quite yeah. pretty common that you have yeah. people coming in as 18-year-olds? Yeah, so um, as long as they have a portfolio, so that we'd need to see that they actually do really have an interest um, beyond just taking photographs for you know, their Instagram or of their friends and things like that. We'd need to see more. But um, as long as you have a good visual eye, you could join. There's, there's a foundation program here, which is um, it sort of sits between level three and level four. You do one year of, of fine art, but you can do a um, photography as aspect of that, or you can move on to HG. So HND is what we offer here in um, photography, but equally you could do a BA at Hertfordshire University or one of the others in the local area or national. Okay. But also right. here, and it would be at other colleges too, if you were to get the GCSE, you thought that you might get, that it is a level two programme, which isn't, again, isn't just specifically photography. It's lots of aspects of art, but you will do some photography on that and that prepares you then to move up to level three. Okay, thank you. And so for a, you know, a current year 11 student who's going to be you know, thinking about what they what they do is for year 12, um, what are the sorts of things that you're going to be looking for in them that would make them a good credible student for, for one of your programmes? Um, so like Sam was saying, uh, definitely like a keen eye for photography. So we would look at their portfolio. That would be a, a huge aspect of it. Um, to see that they're driven, they have a passion about the subject. Again, if they want to study photography with us, we do reiterate that this is something that you want to do as a career and not really as a hobby. If you want to do it as a hobby, then study it more as a vocational course. Um, I know it's difficult for young people today. They might not know what they might want to do also. Um, so I guess it's researching the different courses, seeing what they have to offer, going to different open days for different colleges, asking the tutors about the course, you know, basically, you know, the tutors want you on their course. So ask them questions about it and make sure it's if it's the right course for 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 you. Sure. OK. And then I said, not the fact that you've got lots of different courses, but typically someone who might come in and do a level three course, what would the makeup of that course look like? Are we talking a couple of years. Is it Monday to Friday course? How, how did how, what was the breakdown of it? So it's a full uh, full time course and it runs over two years, uh, similar to, to how A levels would run. Um, they wouldn't be in five days a week. It would be a bit less than that. Um, however, they're still expected to work five days a week and work more independently because um, coming into level three, we expect them to be a bit more independent coming uh, from leaving school or going into A levels. So they do have a bit more of that independence and trust. Um, but yes, it would be a full time course over two years. Yeah. And in terms of qualifications, you'd like them to get five GCSEs, um, including the English and maths. At level four, yeah, and or above. Yeah, okay. And then just to explain to her, because this is the question I always get is, um, you know, why do we need to have English and maths? Apart from the fact, well, you just kind of need to have it. What are the what are the sort of the technical areas of maths and English that are going to be helpful and useful for somebody when they're studying photography? Well, there is technical aspects to photography, so it's understanding sort of light ratios in the studio. Um, even down to using um, Photoshop and, and different applications, you are actually working with some numbers and, gra and gradients and things. So mm -hmm. working out volumes of, of kind of liquids when you're working in the dark room, there is some kind of basic maths, but it's there. And English, definitely because you have to write comprehensively and eloquently about photographer's work and about your own work. You have to do quite a lot of research and writing and report writing. Mm -hmm. sure. so you would probably be surprised about how much maths and English is involved, actually. I mean, when we just look at like the core thing about a camera is the exposure triangle, which is aperture and shutter speed. They're measured in decimal points and fractions. So straight away, that's they're, they're already needing to understand that. Hmm. Yeah, no, that sounds like some, some really practical examples there. Um, Keith, I know that you come in and you and, and you mentor and you support some students on the programme. Mm -hmm. What for you? What are the sorts of skills and qualities that really good 
students who, you know, particularly those that have just come out of school, what do they all possess? What are the things that you, you often notice in them? I think it's just dedication, really. If, if they want to learn, then it's easier for us to teach them. Um, uh, not that everybody has the right abilities, uh, but you, you know, you can guide them if they're, again, if, if they're dedicated, if they want to learn. Um, I think that was a big thing with, with, with Keith actually, was because Keith came in with no photography experience. However, he was driven, dedicated, and knew this was what he wanted to mm. do. And Keith uh, put in the hours and put in the work, but was able to catch himself up. But that didn't come without um, really applying himself to it. Yeah, because uh, I, was, I was twice the age of everybody else. And I didn't do terribly well when I was at school. Uh, so I, I came in with a mindset that I have to do twice whatever's set. I thought if, if they want a thousand words, I'll do two thousand words. If you want five pictures, I'll do ten pictures. And I, I, I came in thinking that's what I needed to do. So I kind of had the right, you know, mm -hmm. the, the right kind of. Uh, I knew what I wanted to do. You know, I, I knew that I had to push myself, and I can't. I didn't want to prove people right from when I was at school. Um, turns out dyslexic and all kinds of other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, if, if you've got a dedication, I, I, I think that's the, the single most important yeah. thing. I think dedication and enthusiasm is obviously important in any subject that you take, but particularly in art subjects and photography because it's a competitive industry as well. So you really yeah. need to push and really live and breathe images. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned about portfolios earlier. Would you expect someone coming in to access a level three course that they've already got a portfolio or evidence of, of, of work that they've done beforehand? And what might that look like? Uh, yeah, so we, we interview all our students prior to them coming on the course. And part of that interview is that they show us a portfolio of their work. Um, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm not expecting masterpieces, but again, I'm just expect I just want to see that interest there, um, and that they are actively going out and taking images. Um, some are already studying it at GCSE anyway, so they already have that. Um, but you're applying for a photography course. I would expect to see some images first. Yeah. Yeah. And is that physical images, or could it be digital ones, or have you not fancy? No, it could, it, could, it could be either. The bit, some uh, sometimes we'll interview online, and sometimes we'll interview face to face. Uh, so if we are interviewing face to face, if I can see the physical images, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm sort of quite interested to know. Of course, everybody was. Well, everyone who's got a smartphone now, which we kind of assume is everyone. I know it's not everyone, but we, everyone therefore has got access to a, I guess, a high quality camera to some extent it's you no know, it's not like when probably we were all younger and it was a it was a it was a polaroid or a, or a kodak um is that a good thing or a bad thing for the industry that that you've got so many more i guess photographers who are taking pictures every day is it leading people into bad habits or would you say it's it's, it's a good thing is a good exposure to to what the career might look like Do you want to take it, Sam? yeah so we and people take photographs with their phones and so do students and we do sometimes as well uh, but I think it's really really important if you want to be a good photographer and succeed to have that balance so we encourage the students when the offset to, to put the camera phone away and to learn how to use the DSLR so the proper camera in the, with a you know with the lead lots of variety of lenses and to understand how to operate that correctly in order to take much more professional images. The quality is still better with the camera uh, than it is on the phone. Um, but we understand that you know it's mobile and it's quite quick and I don't think it, there's any harm in it, but I don't think you can marry the two. I don't think you would use a phone professionally. And that's what we're trying to discourage our students from doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I think, I think, I think there's, there's, there's positives and there's negatives. It's amazing that everyone has, not everyone like you said, but it's amazing that so many people have access to being able to take good images. There's, but there's a lack of control on that phone because the phone's working half of it out for you. And what we try to teach you is to control every element of that image. So um, you're making the decisions of why certain things look a certain way instead of the phone making those decisions. Yeah. So, so my, my final question for this section then is 
What experiences would you recommend someone gaining whilst they're at school or before coming on a on an actual photography course? And I guess that's to try and use a I'm going to say proper camera. That's probably not the right phrase. Um, but but just get lots of experiences taking shots. Maybe things you can volunteer to be involved in at school or at home. Yeah, I think if you can get a, a professional camera, maybe from a friend, family, or from the school, great. But if you can't, then at least you know, use your phone to do that. But there's lots of other um, students I've spoke to have photographed things like their school prom, uh, sports matches at school, um, that kind of thing. So they've kind of volunteered to teachers and asked them kind of if they could get involved in doing something like that, or clubs or any hobbies that they do outside. I've got students who were in dance clubs and they photograph the the productions that they put on. That kind of thing is quite useful. It's a good experience. Great. Okay. I think, I I think start start looking at other photographers as well. So start looking at other pictures, see what you like. Um, get get like a inspiration from those. Go to galleries, uh, any gallery. You, you can see the structure of the picture if you go to the tape. Have a have a look at a, a Van Gogh or something. To see the structure of the picture, and you can apply uh, the the same theory in photography. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, just, I mean, just touching on what key, I tell young people to say because young people always ask me, "How do I be a better photographer?" And it's hard to answer. There's no like one one answer for that question. But a lot of the time I say before you've even picked up the camera, like Keith said, go to galleries, watch film, go to the theatre, read books. Because then when someone puts a good photo in front of you, or if you take a good shot, you'll recognise. And you can't recognise that until you've gone out and seen what, what was really out there already. Sure. Okay, right, I've had a really good question that's come in, and this was a nice segue actually into the next session, which is around progression routes and what happens once students complete their courses. So the question that's come in is, I haven't seen many apprenticeships for photography. What is the best option if you don't go to uni? So I don't know, first of all, if you've got any thoughts specifically on apprenticeships that might exist, um, but then what are the natural progression routes for your students once they finish with you on a level three course? I I haven't yet come across an apprenticeship in photography and I've been teaching for some time. I I think if they exist, they're very much few and far between. Um, progression use that, that our students usually take is to either carry on doing their higher education photography course here with us, which is what we offer, or um, they move on to different universities, um, a range of different universities, mostly to not do a specialist photography course, they just do a BA in photography, so they're still kind of not specialising, do the range. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Joe, yeah, destination wise. I think it's about, about percentage wise, about 60 40, and about 60% go off to university, 40% decide not to. Um, and from around that 40%, I would say about half continue uh, freelancing, trying to start their own businesses, marketing themselves, with the other 60% going to university and maybe about 20% yeah. uh, pursuing careers. Yeah. I think if you can and you're inclined or to, I, I think it is better to go to university and study or do higher education in photography. This is you'll get even more experience, more context, you contacts, you'll work with other photographers and artists. So you're kind of building up folios together. Um, just it, it allows you that time to build contact. Yeah. And I tell students all the time, don't wait until you finish a course and then think, oh, I'll, I'll apply for this or I'll do this work experience. No, do it while you're on the course because then you can build those clients. So when you leave the course, you've got work set up and ready for you. Um, so I think networking while you're actually on a course is is important and not just waiting, oh, I'll do my, my course and then apply for jobs afterwards. Yeah. They should be actively looking the whole time. I think it's yeah. hard harder to pursue a, a career in photography if you don't study it for a further th three years in higher education. Because um, like I said before, it, it's it's so competitive that, like Joel said, you need that time to, to build up your own portfolio, you, build on your skills and try and understand and try and, and network and kind of understand kind of what area you might like to kind of move into as well. Sure. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of taking it as a given that anyone who's going out there doing wedding photography or whatever they're doing have, have got a qualification, first of all. 
Could you, I mean, could, could you tell, you, maybe you've seen people's wedding photos and you've looked at them and thought, you know, not quite sure whether they've, whether they're as qualified as they, as they should be. Is it quite obvious to you just by the, are there, are there obvious things that you would look out for where you can tell someone has gone to quite a high level of qualification? My, my sister got married recently and her wedding photographer just was strolling about in a polo shirt, a dirty polo shirt, trainers, jeans, you kind of want to be as invisible as possible at these kind of that he was in just in the way everywhere it's just no no decorum at all and there's no way that guy went to university i think i i think you can tell when when they don't when they don't have it it's quite it's quite obvious yeah um yeah no, i mean not not everyone's gone to not no. every good photographer has gone to university but those good photographers that didn't go to university would have still applied themselves a lot, learned a lot online, learned a lot from the people they've worked with, um, and it would have taken time. Recently, we, we met a photographer who uh, went on to have a career for over 20 years in sports photography, um, and he wasn't professionally trained. And he said his first three, four years, he wasn't he was taking images that he was unhappy with and that he wished were better, and that if he had that prior training, he could have got that, but it took him three or four years in there but then he went yeah. on to have a very successful career but that that early stage he did he did wish he had those that prior knowledge and skill yeah. sure so i just want to talk about the prospect so someone's come through they've, they've been on the course they've possibly gone on to university and they've, they've gone to study further um i mean I, the word chair has got a horrible one but i can't think of a better one but between you and the other three colleges and for the University of Hertfordshire, you know, you're churning out a lot of photography students coming through and going out into the into industry every year. I mean, is there enough work out there for everybody? What sort of assurances would you give? I say that to all the students and any parents as well that come in to open evenings. We have a massive creative industry in this country. It's really actually one of our best industries, if not the best industry in this country, and it's a big employer because of that and we're if you just just you know if everybody's to think about all the images they've seen just in one day we're proliferated by images all the time and somebody's taking those so there's always work and um, what kind of work you do is is sort of dependent on what you know you want to do and what you're driven to do but i think there there is a demand for more photographers and that's why it's so popular as well i think Sure. And I mean, is that reflected, Joel, in the numbers of people that you're getting applying for the courses as well? Um, yeah, yes, I, I would say so. I mean, we don't. I, I mean, our, our numbers on the course are usually around 15 to 20, uh, dependent, dependent on the year. Um, but obviously, some students go to different colleges or um, sorry, go to different colleges or to, to A-levels as well. Um, I think before maybe the numbers were actually higher for people wanting to study that. Um, I think that uh, different courses are being pushed much more to be studied now by, mm -hmm. by the government essentially. So it's not maybe as popular as it was but maybe that's not that's not a bad thing because like you said the jobs are competitive anyway but um uh i'm sure they still get a high rate at university as well yeah, yeah. okay now you you've spoke right at the start when you spoke about the course and you know the different creative subjects that there are and how you try and amalgamate some of them within the course but so what i want to know is someone who's been a photographer are there obvious areas that they might then go and branch out into having done photography or do photographers tend to stay as photographers forever? Uh, what do you mean as in like a specialism <clears throat> within photography do you mean? No it's, it's, it's more whether there's there, there are other sort of natural careers that once you've learned photography or you, you've worked in photography for a while you might then go into so there's one that comes from often people and there's a question in here is is um, videography the same as photography and do you study the same thing so what are the things that you might then go off into you could go into advertising production a film um cinematography picture editing um curation museum curation uh, forensic photography um, graphic yeah, graphic designer 
yeah, yeah. Uh, you could be going to curating galleries yeah. teaching photography teaching um <laughs> I mean, it's so many different elements within within. I mean, that's why I think what's important is that we teach you how to be a creative, and that collaboration with other courses is so important because that allows that opens up so many more avenues than just you always having to hold the camera and actually shoot. Uh, be the shooter, you know. You could end up being you could end up being an editor. You could end up being a producer of the magazine. We actually just get to make the decisions, um, and you don't hold the camera. You've got to get working there, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let, let me ask you this question directly as it's come in then it's about videography. I always thought I wanted to go into photography, but now I've seen a bit more about videography and I'm wondering whether I want to do that instead. How do I know which one I want to do? I mean, how similar are they? What are the sort of similarities and, and differences? Uh, there's, definitely, there's definitely a big difference between moving image and still image. Um, the process is completely different. There's a lot. There's a lot of different things that go into both. Um, one thing that I will say is that uh, moving image is coming into photography a lot more. Um, so people that look for photographers nowadays are also looking for them to be able to shoot video as well. Um, so it is something that we're looking to introduce more on the course ourselves, also to teach a bit more video um, and moving image. I mean, I would say to the person that asked that question is is definitely make perhaps like test test it out beforehand, something have a go with it. They are they are both very different. Um, what what we do here, um, I can't speak for other colleges, but I'm, they may do something similar. Is we do like a six week grace period, so students can come say study photography for six weeks. If they decide actually they prefer to go and do a video or media. They can then move over within that first yeah. six weeks. Um, so there's that kind of crossover there. All right. I taught on the level three um, creative media program before, and part of that, one of the or two of the modules actually are still photography. So I think it's just inquiring and making sure you read prospectuses properly, talking to tutors, and find out what the course content is. Um, yeah. Okay. Right, there's a couple more questions. If you've got any more questions, if you're watching this live, you want to ask your questions, um, please type them in now. We've got a couple more minutes that we can we can cover these off. And so there's a couple for me to get through here. Um, this one it says, um, my daughter's really interested in photography. She really just uses her iPhone at the moment. What camera would you recommend to get for her as a good starting point? Uh, so any kind of like starter Canon or Nikon DSLR, you genuinely can't go wrong with. Mirrorless is becoming more popular now, but I would still suggest to get like kind of like a base level Nikon or Canon. Obviously, I don't know what this person's budget is because um, kind of cameras range from quite a bit. But if you're looking for like an entry level Canon or Nikon, you're probably looking to pay between like two, three hundred pounds, depending uh -huh. if it's new or second hand as well. I'd always say look out for second hand um, because you can find some pretty good things, but like Canon 55Ds, Canon 5500Ds 50, uh, and things like that are usually quite quite good. Not a good starter. Yeah. Okay. Um, but um, like a, a workman should never blame their tools. Like a good photographer could be able to make good photos of any camera. Sure. And the three of you, have you got a favourite camera? From them? I'm sure you've, you've gone through many over the years. Is there a particular favourite of yours that would be your go-to now? Yeah. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're Canon-based yeah. here, I'm ca just because I'm used to using it. Because yeah. I use it a lot and I'm used to it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, one of my favourites I started to think of recently, because I'm teaching a, a darkroom photography unit, so we're in the, we're shooting on film. I actually like my film camera, my, mm. my, my old SLR. With 35mm fixed lens, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm Canon all the way. Canon okay. all the way. Yeah. <laughs> but there is there's, there's not, I mean, like a Canon or a Nikon, you'll be fine. Like, uh, there's new cameras nowadays, like the mirrorless, the Sony's, and the Fuji films are very good as well. You're looking at more money. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it, you know, it seems to be going that way. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if this is a question or a, perhaps an observation or a statement, really, but someone's saying here, um, they're going to their their uncle's wedding later this year. Would you recommend that I spend time with the photographer on the on the day? I think that would be a good thing to do, but I'm not sure whether I would enjoy the wedding as much. I don't know if you've got any tips for that. <laughs> I think they should definitely spend some time with the photographer. Yeah. 
Yes, I would. Yeah. Spend yeah. some time, ask some questions, maybe not the whole day. Yeah. He might be busy um, and you might annoy him a little bit, um, but it's definitely worth him asking questions. You've got to think at one point they were in the exact same position as you. Um, so generally, um, I'm sure they would be more than happy to answer any questions they might have. To do. Sure. Uh, maybe not, though, if it, was the, if it was the same photographer who was at Keith's sister's wedding. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's walking around in trainers. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. You might pick up some pick up some bad habits. Um, <laughs> I've, but there's another question here about what's the, what's the, well, I'm going to read it as it is, what's the worst photo shoot you've done and why? I like that question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if I if I say would I be watching? Yeah. <laughs> well, about, um, I, I can't think of anything specific, but there's there has been shoots where it's so obvious that person doesn't want to be there. Yeah. And and you can't get anything out of them. It's mm. just like a, they've decided they want to want to be there and they want you to know that they don't want to be there so you have a short amount of time with them and it, it, it they make it very 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 hard um but i can't think of anything it would be unprofessional to say yeah i mean i have i did i did photograph someone with some notoriety once um and you could tell that they didn't really want to be there for very long so yeah that was that was tough but that's that that's part of your job as a photographer yeah. um yeah. it's all about problem solving yeah, yeah. We have well, salvage, salvage the moment. If it's not, yeah, yeah. So salvage in the moment if it's not going quite how you'd like. Try and come away with something. I mean, you, you talk about those sort of people skills and ability to deal with people. I know why, where I've done sort of professional photography sessions with, with our family when I had quite young children at the time, and actually the photographer being able to work with my well, my daughter then who was probably one or two years old and perhaps didn't want to be there. I was quite picky about what she was going to wear or what she was going to hold. Um, there are some real people skills that have to come into that. Like, I guess you just have to learn, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You learn to sort of read people, empathise, um, understand. Yeah, read their body language as well. It's making them feel comfortable. Mm. Yes, yeah. big part of it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, look, I think we've probably gone through all the questions that have been submitted now. So what I just want to close with is, first of all, green you can see there, that will provide you with a QR code to each of the four colleges in Hertfordshire, specifically their art and photography pages. So depending on where you are in the county or where you'd want to travel, you'll find that there is a college pretty close to you. So you may well have, you may well be that your school or there'll be other schools locally that offer photography as an A-level. So don't discount those. Either. The other website that I've got on there as well is the um, is, is, is the RPS, the Royal Photographic Society. Are there any other good organisations or perhaps any blogs or anything that you guys would recommend people have a look at or, or do a bit of further reading about? I think, excuse me, the Photographer's Gallery in London is a really good one to follow. Um, lens culture. Yeah, mm. lens culture. It's very good. So, um, photography gallery and the other one, lens culture. Those are okay. the highly recommended. BJP, the British Journal of Photography, is good too. Yeah. So some, some really good tips, there for some really good places to have a, have a look at. But say, you, you know, your own local college or, or sick forms if they offer the courses as well. Perhaps a really good sign, but I think particularly if you go to the colleges that you've, you've you know you've got people like Sam, Joel, and, and Keith there. They don't just teach it; they they they're teaching it because they've got a whole wealth of experience and industry knowledge beforehand that they can they can share with you as well. So definitely recommend going to the to any open days that are that are available to go and have a have a look at. Right, I think we'll probably close the webinar there with no more questions coming in so firstly thank you to all of those of you that are watching particularly if you're watching live and you've submitted your questions and you've you contributed to this webinar today um do remember this session has been recorded so it is available to watch back if you've got any friends or family members who you think might enjoy this as well do direct them to our uh, hot pages particularly the youtube channel where you can see all the previous videos that we've got that qr code there will take you to our library of different webinars that we've got we've got a whole host of different topics and industries that we've covered over the last two and a half years um, but let me close most particularly by thanking our three fantastic panelists 
um, Sam, Joel and Keith, thank you so much for giving up your time and for sharing your experiences with us today. And I'm sure that Hertfordshire will be all the richer for budding photographers coming through the systems and, and working at colleges um, with people like yourselves. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. And wish everybody else a, a very good evening. Thank you.